Well, hey, everybody. God bless you. This is Fred Krupp coming to you from the Healing Rooms Apostolic Center here in Santa Maria, California, where the sun is shining today. Hey, uh, I'm in the midst of a series of messages called Teach Us Your Ways, O God, and we're talking about the laws of the kingdom. And today I'm going to be talking about this is part one of the law of love. That's right. You see, in the kingdom of God, uh, we've been transferred from the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of light, from the kingdom of Satan into the kingdom of Jesus. And we're in a new kingdom, and we need to understand how to function in this new kingdom. Well, can I just tell you that one of the major laws of this kingdom is love. That's right. And understanding love is critical to us understanding how to operate within the kingdom of God. So for those of you that are joining me, I'm talking about the law of love. Make sure you click share. Make sure you uh, leave a link for my YouTube channel. Make sure you go there and subscribe and click the bell. Also click like, and so we can get these videos out to as many people as we can. If you're watching on YouTube, uh, you just go to Fred Kropp, uh, K-R-O-P-P, -P, and you're, right now you're on the the Healing Rooms YouTube channel, but you can go to mine and there'll be a whole series, probably 80 or more messages that will help you to walk in the ways of God. All right. So, hey, so let's just start off by reading the love chapter uh, in 1 Corinthians 13, verses 1 through 13. So it's called the love chapter. You'll see why. So this is the Apostle Paul, who is mightily used by God. Here's what he says. He says, Though I speak with tongues of men and of angels, but I have not love, I have become a sounding brass or a clanging cymbal. And though I have the gift of prophecy and understand all mysteries and all knowledge, and though I have all faith so that I could remove mountains, but have not love, I am nothing." And though I bestow my goods to feed the poor, and though I give my body to be burned, that sounds like love, doesn't it? Though I give my body to be burned, he says, but have not love, it profits me nothing. And then he defines love. Love suffers long, love is kind, love does not envy, love does not parade itself, is not puffed up, love does not behave rudely, love does not seek its own, is not provoked, thinks no evil, does not rejoice in iniquity or sin, but rejoices in the truth. Love bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. Love never fails. He goes on to say, but whether there are prophecies, they will fail. Whether there are tongues, they will cease. Whether there is knowledge, it will vanish away. For we know in part, Paul says, and we prophesy in part, but when that which is perfect comes, then that which is in part will be done away. When I was a child, he says, I spoke as a child, I understood as a child, I thought as a child, but when I became a man, I put away childish things. For now we see in a mirror or a glass darkly, but then we're going to see face to face. Now I know in part, but then I shall know just as I'm also known. And now abide faith, hope, and love, these three, but the greatest of these is love. Well, there you have it. Let's pray and let's jump into the law of love. Father, we thank you, first of all, that you love us. Thank you for so loving us that you sent Jesus to pay the price for our sins so we can have a relationship with you, that we can be made right with you, justified, just as if we have never sinned because of the sacrifice and love of God and that was manifest through Jesus, your son. And so, Father, we pray and we invite the Holy Spirit to speak to us. Come on, ask him to speak to you today as I share about love being the greatest thing. Lord, open our eyes and ears to hear and help us to apply these things to our lives so we can represent you well during our time of stay here on earth. I pray that in Jesus' name, amen and amen. Well, let me just tell you, as I begin to talk about love being the greatest thing, I think you're going to begin to experience literally the love of God. Love, The love of God is not just a theory, it's actually tangible. You can actually experience. You can encounter the love of God because the Bible says the love of God is shed abroad in our heart. This is Romans chapter 5, by the Holy Spirit. So if you have, if you've been born again, you have God living in you, you have the, the love of God in you, and you can experience God's love for you. It's like God giving you a supernatural hug. Come on, there are some of you out there today, you need a, super, a supernatural hug from God. Well, 
Let's just jump right in here. Talking about, those that are jumping on right now, I'm talking about the law of love over the next couple of sessions. Well, why is love the greatest thing? Well, first off, the most obvious reason is because the Bible tells us that God is love. That's 1 John chapter 4 uh, and verse 8. He who does not love does not know God, for God is love. So God is holy, God is righteous, but God in his very essence, the reason that we're all not toast right now, we haven't been destroyed, is because God is merciful and God is love and love wants the best for everyone. That's right. And so the reason that love is the greatest thing is obviously because God is love. Another reason why love is so is the greatest thing is because love is the reason that we were created. The Bible tells us, Peter, the Apostle Peter says in 1 Peter 4, he says, above all these things, have fervent love for one another, for love will cover a multitude of sins. Uh, he also goes on to tell us that, that we are to love one another. He says, have you heard this message? 1 John chapter 3, verse 11, for this is the message you heard from the very beginning that we should love one another. And then Paul in Colossians 3.14 says, but above all these things, put on love, which is the perf bond of perfection, or another version says the perfect bond of unity. You know, why don't we have unity in the body of Christ? I believe it's because very few Christians have stepped into the unconditional. I'll be talking about in the next session, I'm going to talk about what is love. And uh, we very few Christians are living in what we, the Bible calls agape love or unconditional love. I believe if we really had the love of God in the body of Christ, we would see a much greater unity than all the division. You know, if you go on YouTube, everybody's attacking everybody. Everybody's calling everybody out. Everybody's saying this person's a false prophet, this person, this, this and that. And they're all these attacks. You know what? There's no love there. They're not, you know, if they love people, they would go talk to them and, and be with them. And so one of the reasons love is so great is because we were created to love one another. Another thing that makes love the greatest thing, and that is that love is the greatest witness that we are Christians. This is so true. You know what? As I go out and I've encountered people, even just recently, I encountered one of my neighbors uh, recently this week and never met this person before. And this, it was a lady that lived in my neighborhood, and she called out to me and, want, and was starting to ask me some questions. And one question led to another until we were talking about the deepest needs of her life. And, and so I said to her, you know what, uh, can I pray for you? And she said, would you? And I said, absolutely. Now, she just opened up. I was able to share with her my testimony and about Jesus and about uh, how do we get righteous before God and explain those things. But it wasn't because I went up there and said, hey, you need Jesus in your life. And that's not a bad thing to say, by the way. Uh, but in other words, as I approached her, she felt the love of God. I, I approached her with love. Jesus said in John 13, 35, by this will all know that you are my disciples if you have love for one another. Do you ever wonder why so many people follow Jesus? Why would these disciples that, uh, that you know, we talk about the 12 disciples, but there were actually 70 disciples that were following Jesus around and, and it says the, the 12, it says they left everything and followed him. Why would they just do that? I'll tell you why, because Jesus manifested the love of God. And when people feel the love of God, they are, it draws them in. It, it, it touches the deepest part of their being. And so the greatest witness that we can have is to love one another. That's what I love about our church. If you were to come to our church, uh, you, you could not get in and out there, in and out of our church without, with, without several people in, in some uh, you know, meaningful way expressing love for you. Another reason that love is the greatest thing is because the loving God and one another are the two greatest commandments. So Jesus was asked, what are the two greatest commandments? In Mark chapter 12, verses 30 and 31, he said, here are the two greatest commandments, that you shall love and you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, with all your strength. This is the first commandment. And the second, like it, is this. 
you shall love your neighbor as yourself. There is no other commandment greater than these. So love, loving God, by the way, with all of our heart, soul, mind, and strength. And if you do that, you expend all your love on God. So you don't have any love for anything else. So now you're going to tap into the love of God for other people. That's a whole nother message. But so loving God and loving people is the two, and loving one another's two greatest commandments. Another reason that the love that love is the uh, is the greatest thing is because love is what motivated the Father, God the Father, to give His Son to you and I for our salvation. John three sixteen, right? For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son, that whoever believes in Him would not perish but have everlasting life. So what motivated God to send Jesus to become sin for us, to die on the cross, and then to be resurrected so that you and I can be made right with God? It was love that motivated the Father to do that. Here's another thing about love, and that is love is what distinguishes us from the rest of the world. Uh, Jesus uh, taught this in Luke 6, verses 32 to 35. It says, Jesus said, but if you love those who love you, what credit is that to you? For even sinners love those who love them. And if you do good to those who do good to you, what credit is that to you? For even sinners do the same. But Jesus said, love your enemies, do good and lend, hoping for nothing in return, and your reward will be great and you will be sons of the Most High, for He is kind to the unthankful and the evil. So one of the things that makes you and I different from everybody else in the world is that we don't love based on, well, if you love me, then I'm going to love you, right? That's the, kind of the way it is in the world. We go up to people or we, somebody in our family, and we say, hey, I love you. And really, if there's an expectation, we want them to say, I love you back. But the love of God is doesn't expect anything in return. It's 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 a love where we say we love you even if you're our enemy, even if you do wrong to us, we're still going to love you. Another reason that love is the greatest thing is because love is the goal of the New Testament. I don't know if you ever thought about this, but the New Testament teaching in the, of the Bible has a goal. And Paul reveals that goal in 1 Timothy chapter 1, verse 5. He says this. He said, the goal of our instruction or our teaching is love from a pure heart, a good conscience, and a sincere faith. So there's, there's something, there's an insight right now. So as I read the New Testament, if I understand the goal of the New Testament and the teaching of the New Testament, then I can know how to apply it to my life. And so Paul says that the goal of the New Testament teaching, the Gospels, the Epistles, all, you know, the book of Revelation, so on, all these, uh, the books of the New Testament, their goal is to produce love from a pure heart, a good conscience, and a sincere faith. Come on, somebody, you ought to be amen and at that point. Those of you who are joining me, I'm talking about the law of love. And I'm talking about that love is the greatest thing. This is part one of the law of love. And he just talked about that the whole goal of the New Testament teaching is love from a pure heart, a good conscience or a clear conscience and a sincere faith. Now, if you're joining at this point in the video, you want to go back and catch up. Also, make sure you click share. Make sure you go to my YouTube channel. I'll leave a link there. And when you get there, Click the bell, click subscribe, and click on the like bu uh, button there as well. All right. So we're talking about why is love the greatest thing? Here's another reason. That is, loving one another was Jesus' command to his disciples. Now, I find this really interesting. You know, Jesus had 12 disciples. How many of you ever noticed that they weren't all the same, that they were all different. They had different personalities. Uh, they even, you know, uh, some of them were scheming. We, they wanted to be, they were always arguing about who's going to be the greatest one. And uh, even uh, James and John got their mother to go to Jesus at, on the side and try to talk him into make, making sure that her two sons were going to, one's going to be on the right side and left when he gets to his kingdom and so on. And it says the others heard this and they were put out. Come on. So we don't get the picture. We see the disciples going along. We see, uh, you know, 
uh, I th you know, movies about the disciples, but really there was their personalities were radically different from each other. And so now Jesus gives them a commandment, a new commandment. This is John 13, 34. Jesus said to them, a new commandment I give you, that you love one another as I have loved you, that you also love one another. And actually in the Greek, it means that you love one another in the same depth and manner that I have loved you. Well, how did Jesus love them? Even though they, you know, they messed up at times, the disciples said dumb things or did dumb things at times, he still loved them. He still, he still believed in them. He still encouraged them. He was still for them. Uh, and so now Jesus is telling his 12 disciples, you know, the same way that I've loved you, that's how I want you to love one another. I'm sure they looked around the group and they're wondering, you know, you mean love Peter? I mean, he's always got his foot in his mouth. And, you know, he's always doing, you know, he's the guy that got out, he's always showing off. He got out of the boat and walked on the water. Uh, maybe they looked at Doubting Thomas, who's, uh, you know, one of the disciples who said, you know, every time they're going to go somewhere, he's like, we're just going to go die. He was just like this, you know, negative guy and so on. And, and they probably once in a while looked at Judas, you know, he's got the money box. What's he doing with the money and so on. And so they looked around, and here Jesus is now challenging them with this new commandment, and that is that they love one another in the same way he had loved them. Another reason that love is the greatest thing is because love is the indicator indicator that we have been born of God. 1 John 4, 7 says, Beloved, let us love one another, for love is of God, and everyone who loves is born of God and knows God. God. That's right. Everyone who uh, is born of God knows, it, 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 everyone who loves is born of God and knows God. So when you're born again, one of the indicators, that's what I look for when I'm looking at Christians, uh, I'm not looking for their talk or when they try to live, you know, holy and righteous and all that. I'm looking for, do they love people? You know, that's what tells me somebody that's really walking with the Lord, because if they are somebody that really knows Jesus, if they're really born again, you've been born into a new kingdom, and it's the kingdom of God's love. Come on. And so when someone is really following Jesus, they're going to manifest love out of their life. Uh, in 1 John 4, 15 and 16, uh, John says, whoever confesses that Jesus is the Son of God has God living inside. And that person lives in God. And so we know the love that God has for us, and we trust that love. God is love. Those who live in love live in God, and God lives in them. So it's a, love is a major sign that you have been born of God. Here's another one, and that is love is the determining factor whether or not we really know God. Again, I already mentioned it, 1 John 4, 8, he who does not love does not know God. So if you really know God, you're going to walk in love. You're going to manifest love. Another uh, sign uh, of why love is the greatest thing is because loving others is the litmus test of your love for God. That's right. How do you know how much you love God? Well, you can tell by how much you love people. Because if you really love God, you're going to love people. This is 1 John 4, verse 20. By the way, the whole chapter of 1 John 4 is talking about God is love and those who love are born of God and so on. But 1 John 4, 20 says this, if someone says, I love God and hates his brother, he's a liar. For he who does not love his brother whom he has seen, how can he love God whom he has not seen? So, you know, when if you say you really love God, but you don't, you know, you're just mean to people and you're unkind to people and you're rude to people, then here the litmus test is that really shows you you don't really love God that much. Because if you really love God, you're going to love your brother. You're going to love other people. It's a manifestation of loving God. Remember the first commandment, love God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength, and love your neighbor as yourself. Another reason that love is the highest thing or the greatest thing is because the only thing we are to owe one another is love. This is Paul writing in Romans 13, verse 8. He says, owe no one anything except love to love one another, for he who loves one another has fulfilled the law. 
And that kind of leads to the next reason that love is the highest thing, because love is the fulfillment of the Ten Commandments. That's right. Romans, again, this is the Apostle Paul, Romans 13, verses 9 and 10. He said this, Paul said, for the commandments, you shall not commit adultery, you shall not murder, you shall not steal, you shall not bear false witness, you shall not covet. And if there's any other commandment, all are summed up in this saying, namely, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. Love does no harm to a neighbor, therefore, love is the fulfillment of the law. And so here it is. Instead of trying to work on, I got to fulfill the law, I got to do all the commandments. How about if you just say, God, I want to make sure I'm loving with the love of God. I want to have pure love, love from a pure heart, a clear conscience, and a sincere faith manifest in my life. Now, I know you're probably thinking right now, man, I'm so far from that. And uh, and I can understand I, uh, you know, I'm far from perfect in this, but I'm trying to be conscious and grow more and more because the Bible says we are to grow in love, that lo we increase in love for, for one another. And so uh, it's as we grow in God, we're going to grow in our love. And as we grow in love, guess what? If we concentrate on that, help me, Lord, to love people, to love you first, and then to love people with your love. As I do that, guess what? I'm fulfilling the commandments. Because here he says that here's all these, you know, if you love somebody, you're not going to steal from them. If you love somebody, you're not going to bear false witness, you know, to them. If you love someone, you're not going to murder them or hurt them or do any kind of harm to them because you love them. Because love wants the best for everybody. So love is the fulfillment of the Ten Commandments. Another uh, reason that this love is the greatest thing is because love is the foundation and basis of all ministry. So if you feel like, and by the way, I believe we're all called to into the ministry. I don't necessarily mean you're supposed to be a pastor or an evangelist or a missionary, but we're all part of the body of Christ and we are to minister to one another. And the foundation of all ministry is love. How do I know that? Galatians 5.13, Paul says, For you, brethren, have been called to liberty or freedom. Do not use your freedom or liberty as an opportunity of flesh, to the flesh, for the flesh, but through love serve one another. So here he's saying that, you know, you've been called, you've been set free, you've been called to liberty, but you don't lose, use your freedom in Christ for just an opportunity for your flesh, your, to, for your to be selfish, with, you know, about yourself, but through love serve one another. Uh, Galatians five six says, "For in Christ Jesus, neither circumcision nor uncircumcision amounts to anything, but faith working through love." So love is the foundation of all ministry in the kingdom of God, and finally. Uh, another reason we can understand that, that love is the greatest thing. And those of you that are joining, maybe you jumped on here just a few minutes ago. I'm talking about the law of love. This is part one of the law of love, which was is a major law in the kingdom of God. If you're going to function in the kingdom of God, you need to learn about love and begin to, how do I apply? How do I walk love out practically? Well, I'm going to give you some helps in the next session or two. Well, I'm going to talk to you about what is love and then how do you practically walk out love with other people, right? Sometimes some people are harder to love than others, right? You say that, but it's but when you learn what love really is and what it means to love other people, and I'm going to show you uh, how Jesus taught his disciples to love one another, all right? So that'll be coming up in some in the next few sessions, but in this one, I'm talking about that the greatest thing is love. So here's the last point I want to make, and that is God himself teaches us to love one another. 1 Thessalonians 4, 9, this is the Apostle Paul again, he says, but concerning, but concerning brotherly love, you have no need that I should write you, for you yourselves are taught by God to love one another. So if you're really following God, uh, and you're going after God, and you're listening to God, guess what? One of the number one things he's going to do is teach you how to love one another. And by the way, sometimes 
the way he teaches you is by putting you with people that grade on you. That's right. People that are not like you, you don't like their personality, they're so different from you, uh, they're, they, sometimes they can be mean or nasty or they say negative things or whatever, and you're like, God, why did you put me in this job with these people? Or why did you put me in this family with these people? Well, I'll tell you why, because God wants you to learn how to love people like he loves people, all right? All right, so I hope this was helpful to you, and I want to pray for us here uh, in just a moment, uh, but I, I want to just encourage you to begin to pray, Lord, teach me how to love people. Come on. First off, we got to love God with all of our heart, soul, mind, and strength, and you know, even if you feel like, well, I, I, I don't think I love God that much, well, ask him to help you. God, give me the grace to love you like I really should and to know you like I should. And then uh, you, we need grace to help love other people. Let me just tell a story in closing here. Uh, many years ago when I was first became a Christian and uh, I, I married my wife, Pam, and uh, she was going to college in Idaho. And so we moved to Idaho after getting married. And uh, she had this one of her best friends uh, was this uh, gal, and uh, she was like Mary Poppins. She, I mean, every hair was in place. She was, you know, perfect, and and you know, she, and just everything about her irritated me. That's right. <laughs> it was the kind of perfect, like you know, I thought you must spend hours. Uh, you know, d doing your hair every day just to get it to do everything it's doing and all this. And so I'm this hippie, laid back, you know, guy that got saved. And and we, we're not into, uh, you know, you got to look perfect and you got to do all this. And and her personality, just when you, when we're, her and I were in the same room, you could feel the tension. I could tell she didn't appreciate me that much as well. And I had no other reason other than her, just who she was, Actually, it was just like, I just wanted to, it was kind of like if you put us in a, in a burlap bag, it would be like putting two, you know, Tomcats in a bag uh, with their tails tied together. You know, I just wanted to punch her lights out, right? I wanted to go over and mess up her hair. And so I was having a problem because now I'm this new Christian and I'm just learning that God says, we've got to love everybody. We need to love all people. And so I, I, this really bothered me because I really, you know, was upset with myself. Like, I can't love this, this gal. I don't even want to be in the same room with her. And so uh, God said to me, he said, Fred, why don't you let me love her through you? And I'm like, okay. Uh, obviously, my love is so limited and so shallow, and I need to grow up and all that kind of stuff, but it's not cutting it, right? And so I said, God, I pray that you would love her through me. Well, the very next time I saw her, all of a sudden I felt this love that I hadn't felt before. Before I wanted to, you know, slap her sometimes, all those kind of things. I'm just telling on myself. Uh, and, and, and so, but now I felt compassion and I felt love for her. And I began to see her in a whole new light. And, you know, even though her personality was so radically opposite of mine and different from mine, and just the way she talked and things like that, just, just bothered me or just, you know, uh, I, I didn't like, all of a sudden that all changed because all of a sudden now I'm feeling God's love for her going through me and it changed my whole outlook. So maybe that's where you are right now. And I want to pray for you in closing. Maybe you're around somebody and they're a challenge for you to love, right? I mean, the, the, you, you uh, want to do anything but love the, that person and maybe it's more than one, or even love yourself. Well, I'm going to ask you to do this with me. I'm going to pray, and let's invite the, the God who is love. That's right, God is love, and invite him to begin to love those people through us. Come on. It's such an amazing thing. When you begin to experience God's love going through you, it's one of the most powerful things. I call it the highest high. There's nothing that gets you higher than letting God love through you another human being. Come on. So let me pray for you right now. And, uh, and and first off, make sure you forgive that person, however they've hurt you or for whatever way they've treated you and so on. But then let's pray and say, God, would you love them through me? So Father, I thank you right now for everyone that's watching. I know this is really 
getting down to the nitty gritty. I know this is really uh, touching something deep in uh, those that are watching right now. And I pray uh, that you would love people through us, especially those people that seem to us to be the hardest to love. I'm sure the disciples, they probably wanted to hang out with certain ones. The other ones they just had a hard time with, but they had to learn, especially like the you know, Matthew, the tax collector, he was a hated person. And now they've got to learn how to love Matthew because Jesus loved Matthew. So God, I pray right now that you would help us by your grace and by your power and by the Holy Spirit to love people that we just can't love with our love. Transform us with the power of your love. And we thank you that the greatest thing is love. We pray that in Jesus' name, Amen and amen. Can you say amen to that? Well, listen, God bless you. Thanks for uh, watching. And, uh, and this was session, this was um, session number one or part one of the law of love. And I'll probably do maybe a couple more sessions on love because I want to help you to understand how do we walk in love with other people? What is love? How do we get it manifest in our lives? And, uh, and, and so I want to share some insights that I've learned through the years that will really help you to understand how to love other people with the love of God, all right? So make sure you click share. Make sure you subscribe to my YouTube channel. Again, I'll leave a link there. Also leave my email if you have any questions or comments or you want to uh, get notes from me, or whatever you'd like, or a prayer request, feel free to, to uh, uh, email me. It's f crop, F-K-R-O-P-P, F-K-R-O-P-P, and that is at 1948 at gmail.com. That's right, F crop 1948 at gmail.com. All right, in the meantime, I want you to know that God loves you, I love you, and the Father loves you. Be blessed, my brothers and sisters.